Hi, I'm Marcos Allen with Miami Shooters Club, and I'm going to share with you right now how to draw your pistol from concealment. Now, this technique is advanced shooting technique, so it should only be done under the supervision of a professional firearms instructor. Now, some things to remember whenever you're handling a firearm. Always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Always keep your finger off the trigger, meaning just like this, down the side of the frame, okay? And always keep the gun unloaded until ready to shoot. In this exercise, we're just learning how to draw a gun, so it should not be loaded. You're gonna inspect down the chamber, make sure the gun's not loaded. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's not. Also, make sure there's no ammunition source, there's no uh, magazine here, that the mag well is empty. And I'll just dry fire, make sure it's clean. And with that being said, let's get into it. So this is what the, the way the draw is gonna look like. Okay, and we're gonna break down every step of that. So first of all, from concealment, depending on what you're wearing, your attire, and that can depend on what you, you know, uh, your work attire, maybe you have to wear a jacket when you go to work, or the weather, like uh, down here in Miami, we never wear jackets like this, but where you're at, you might be having this kind of option available. So we're gonna go over first how to access the firearm from, from a jacket like this. And it's gonna look like something like this, okay? So what we're doing here is the hand that the support hand is going to press against my body. This is because when I take the gun out, I might have to shoot from right here. And if my hand's out here, I could shoot my own hand. So I want to keep it against my body. Okay, and we're going to keep it at the same height as our gun. Because I don't want to get ahead of myself, but eventually we're going to join our hands together. And if this is up here, I'm going to have to bring this hand down first to do so. So, uh, when we're going to access, I'm going to grab the material of the jacket preferably by the gun, okay, and I'm going to fling it behind me and get to the gun, okay, while this hand stays in the body. Common mistake from here is grabbing the material too high in the jacket and trying to fling it back, and you can see the butt of my grip is still covered by the jacket. So when I come down, now I have this jacket in the way, okay, and uh, that's pretty much the only error I see, or sometimes people do grab it where they're supposed to, but they do like a shallow thing to try to get to it fast, and look, the jacket's already back you know, getting in the way. So I want to make sure I get a good grip on the material, fling it back hard, and get to my, get to my gun. So that's uh, accessing the firearm with a jacket, okay? Now we'll go over without a jacket, which is something that I'm more familiar with down in sunny, sunny Miami. So uh, there's different options here. Uh, there's, well, the most common is just untucking your shirt and covering your holster. Um, the problem with what the current setup I have, I have an outside the waistband holster. So this is very visible and it's very obvious I have a gun, so it's not ideal. Uh, usually for this kind of attire, you're going to use what's called inside the waistband holster, which is slimmer and, and, and would be, it won't print as much or at all, depending on the type of gun you have. But there's also options for inside the waistband holsters to tuck your shirt in. They're called tuckable inside the waistband holsters. And uh, for practice, you can just leave your shirt untucked because the procedure to access your firearm, whether your shirt's untucked or tucked, is the same. And that way you don't have to keep tucking your shirt in with every repetition you do, okay? Now, for training, we, you, I do recommend use outside the waistband holster because we're going to be doing a lot of repetitions of in and out, in and out, in and out. And if you have an inside the waistband holster, depending on your holster, sometimes you have to wiggle your gun in to get in there. And oftentimes you'll end up pointing a gun at yourself, which is not safe. So it's a lot safer when you're doing high repetitions uh, to use an outside the waistband holster for training the technique. So I'm going to show you two ways to access the firearm with the shirt untucked. And this, this is the, the preferred method I'm going to show you first. I'm going to, it looks something like this, okay? All right, so all I'm doing here is I'm grabbing the material right by the gun with my support hand. So I'm coming across, I'm going to grab a good grip of it. I'm gonna pull it up and over and get it to that same height of where I'm gonna eventually join my hands, okay? And this is pressed against my body. I don't wanna come out here and pull out my gun and potentially point it by accident and shoot my own hand out here. So when I get here, I clear and I come here. The only common mistake that happens with this, with this position is when people grab in the middle of the shirt rather than where their gun is. And when they pull up, you can see the shirt's still on the butt of my grip here, of my gun, so I'm, I'm gonna have issues here, okay? And the only other issue I see sometimes when I brought up, the people have the, they have the grip out here when they come. I don't want this out here, I want this against my body. 
So let's go over what I said earlier was the other method, the less purple method, which is using your shooting hand to access your firearm. And it looks like this, keeping the other hand on my body just before, right there, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the material of my shooting hand where the gun is, just like before, lifting it up and then racing my shirt to get to my grip, to get there before the shirt falls on it. Okay, as you can see, it's some dexterity involved, and that's why it's less preferable. It can also, some people like to make a hook with their thumb and hook underneath there to give them an inside lane to get there before the shirt does. So it looks like this with the, th with the hook method. Now, personally, I don't like the hook method because if I go fast, I might miss it. You know, there I got it, but sometimes you go fast, you don't get it. When you grab the shirt, for me, I like it better. But try both. Maybe you feel better with the thumb method, the little hook thumb. Now, why do these methods when you can just use a support hand and grab there? Well, the reason is sometimes this hand might be occupied. You might be pushing that guy off and have to get to your gun. You might have a child in your hand and have to get to your gun. You might have been shot in the arm and now you still have to get to your gun. So that's why it's important to practice accessing your firearm using your support hand and using your shooting hand. Now, let's go ahead and get into the next step, which is gripping the firearm. Now, in this video, I'm not going to go over how to properly grip a pistol, but you can find my other videos on the internet where I go over how to grip a pistol. But whatever your favorite grip is, go ahead, get nice and comfortable, get your best grip, and then, without changing your grip at all, get that gun, don't move a millimeter of that grip, and put it back in the holster. You can move your index finger up so that your gun can go in, because it'll, it'll, it'll hit the holster, but the rest of the grip doesn't move. Now go back here, make sure it's exactly the, the ideal grip. And once I get in the holster, go ahead and put it in and out, in and out, feel that grip, and then graduate to letting go and regripping. And each time you regrip, it should be identical to your perfect grip. What happens a lot of times is that people will just grab the gun, however, and when they come out here, they got a garbage grip, which could mean a bad sh a poor shooting, or they get out here and I have to readjust their grip which is not ideal at all, okay? So the grip is probably the most important part of the draw. So it's very important, if you have to take a little bit more time before you pull to get the proper grip, do so, because that's how important getting the right grip is. So at this point, we're at access, grip. We got our grip, now we're gonna pull. When we pull, there's a few things you wanna do. One, you wanna make sure you pull high enough to clear the holster. Sometimes people pull kind of shallow and then when they try to, to rotate the gun, it hits the holster. So clear the holster and ideally get this height to match the height of your support hand that you have over here. Now, you also want to have the gun, you can see here, slightly canted outwards. Okay, I'm going to use a rubber gun here to demonstrate what I don't want you to do. What I don't want you to do is pull the gun straight upwards like this. I don't know if you guys can tell in the angle there, but if you follow the muzzle, it's pointed into my leg. Okay. It's because, uh, so you guys know, there's a, there, the, when, when it comes to accidents during the holstering process, there's two areas of the most danger. One is the pull, and then the last one is the reholstering. So this is a, the part, a dangerous part of the whole step. So I don't want my gun pointing at my leg when I pull. So it's just a slight cant. That's it, just a slight cant. It's actually a natural cant when you practice it, okay? Now the next thing that's gonna help prevent any accidents is the finger, okay? This finger stays off the trigger and the pull. It just right down the, down the frame like that, okay? Should be able to see through that magwa, uh, through the trigger guard, I'm sorry. Should be able to see through the trigger guard perfectly. I don't want to see your finger like that blocking it, just like that, okay? So, we're here, we access, we grip, we pull. We got, we got the height, it's matching my support hand height. Okay, we've cleared that holster. It has a slight outward cant and fingers up the trigger. Next step is to rotate. Now, if you notice the rotation, it's pivoting on where the gun is at, okay? My, my elbow does come down, but I'm pivoting here. And when I do this pivot, if you guys can see, there is some space right here. It is close to my body, but there is, there is a space there. What I don't want is the gun pressed up against me like this, where the friction might interfere with the slide should I have to fire at somebody from this range. And I don't want the back plate to be pushed against my rib where it's going to prevent the slide from going all the way, all the way back, which would uh, prevent the spent casing from coming out of the gun and you would jam your gun, up, your, your gun up. Okay, so when I get to here and I rotate, 
depending on how close the thread is, my finger may come on the trigger now. So I might have to fire from right here. Okay? Now, what the other hand does stay on the body. It's very important. Whether you still have your shirt in or not, this hand has to stay here. If my hand is off the body, this is when I could accidentally shoot myself. Okay? So, a uh, common mistake that happens from this position, people tend to do this. Okay? They tend to bring their elbow down to where the gun is, and now the gun comes out. The problem with that is that most self-defense encounters are going to happen within three feet, meaning they're going to be right in front of you. So if I'm doing this kind of arc, this kind of angle, if he's in front of me, he's going to come down that gun. It's very natural instinct. You're like, whoa, you're going to grab that gun. Okay? So when this comes up, they're going to come down that gun. Now you're wrestling around with the gun. If I rotate here, okay, if I rotate right there, this is a hard reach for him. He's got to come all the way across to get to that gun, and odds are I can get that shot off right here. Okay, so once I've gotten that rotate step, okay, I rotate, now I'm going to scrape and join in the center, just like so. I'm here, scrape and join in the center. I'm going to scrape my grip against, let me get this angle here. I'm going to scrape my grip against my body. The gun, there's a space there, okay, I'm not putting the, the back plate against my body so that it's going to interfere with the slide. There's a space there, but I am tight, okay. The reason for that tightness is this is called the retention position. The reason for that tightness is once again, he may be right on top of me. So when I rotate, I come to here. If I come out here, okay, he's gonna have a, if he grabs my gun, he's gonna have a lot of torque to swing my gun around. It's gonna be, it's gonna be very difficult to stop that. But from here, I have very good control of my gun. Now, I don't wanna join out here. I like to join here. And the reason for that is here, I don't have like a point of aim, like a point of reference. Here, Wherever I point my chest, I'm pretty much hitting. Granted, I'm not going to be hitting, you know, 15-yard shots and bullseyes from here, but from a close range, if the guy's right there, I'm hitting. Okay? So now, from here, I'm now extending. Okay? So, when I extend, I'm just punching the gun out, okay, and bringing the sights into my line of vision. Common mistake is this. People get here, and they do like a... Like a, like, a, like a rainbow, like an arch to get there. Uh, if you're in an indoor range, you're probably going to shoot the roof. If you're outdoor range, you go over the berm. And in a tactical kind of situation, you're not aiming at the threat. So if you start shooting now, you're not hitting anything until you get out here. So from here, I want to punch straight out, keeping my gun pointed at the target the whole way. Now, another thing is bringing the sights to my line of vision. I don't want to punch the gun and move my head around to get my sights there. I'm going to bring the sights up to my line of vision when I get here. So, let's break it from the... Now, just so that we go over this, the second I rotate, depending on the threat, I can start firing. Fire, 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 all the way to extension. So let's break it down one time really quick. Access. Grip against the chest, ideally at the height where I want to join. Grip with my ideal shooting grip that we practice over and over. Pull. I want to clear the holster, have a slight outward cant, okay, and I want to have my finger off the trigger. Rotate. Keep the gun tight to your, close to your body, but not pressed against your body. There should be a space so the slide doesn't interfere with your body. Okay. Now scrape and join. Oh, and the finger can go on the trigger at this point, depending on the threat. Scrape and join. Okay, keeping the gun tight to your chest, but again. Not, to, so, not so tight to you that your body is going to be interfering. Now, extend. I'm going to keep the gun pointing at the target while I bring the sights up to my line of vision. Now, once I fire and I, uh, and I eliminate the threat, I'm going to scan assess to break the tunnel vision. I look to my left, look to my right, I'll bring the gun in to my, to my chest. It could be a low ready or a swool position. If you're not familiar with those, I have another video where I go over these positions. I'm going to look over my left shoulder, keeping the gun in a safe direction. I'm going to look over my right shoulder, keeping the gun in a safe direction. Okay? And then I'm going to reholster. Now, some people, when they're scanning assessing in front of them, they like to move their gun. Okay? Um, if you're going to move your gun, eyes first, then gun. In other words, look, move, look, move. A lot of people like to go like this, but the problem with this, if I just shot the threat, and I go and we're in the mall, and I go like this, and I turn here, and there's a little girl there, I say, oh, I have to like move away. I just pointed a loaded gun while my blood was hot at an innocent person. That's why I'm going to look first. Nothing there. 
Now I can move. Look there, move. Okay? But I don't like to let the gun go first. But personally, I don't even move my gun. I look to my left, look to my right. If there's a bad guy there, I'm gonna move. Now, I, when I bring the gun in, look over your left shoulder all behind you. Look over your right shoulder behind you. Coast is clear, we're gonna reholster. This is when a lot of, of, of the accidents that do happen while people are reholstering and, and, and uh, while people are, are, are taking the gun out of the holster and reholstering the gun, a lot of the accidents happen at this step. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna access the holster again. I like to put my thumb on the back plate of the gun. If it's a hammer gun, this is when I can feel if the hammer's cocked back or not. And if it's cocked back, I'll decock it before I holster it. And for, for a, a striker fire gun like this Glock, if the gun's out of battery, meaning that the slide's a little bit back like this, it won't function, I can feel that and fix my gun before I put it in a holster. You never want to put a gun that won't fire back into the holster. Likewise, if I had, if I had extreme, if I ran out of, of ammo and my slide was locked back and had extreme tunnel vision and I didn't notice, when I try to put my thumb back there, oh, and I can, and I, I can reload before I reholster. So I keep my thumb on the back plate and I exaggerate my, trig, my, my, my index finger off the gun like that, okay? So that way there's less chance of an accident. And then I'm gonna look at the holster and, and I'm gonna lean my hip out so I don't have to make it easier not to point the gun at myself and I'm gonna gently put it in the holster. Now there's some people that have a school of thought, there's experts that say um, to look at your holster like I just did and there's experts that say not to look at your holster, to basically when you're here, just reverse the steps and without looking at your holster, reholster the gun. And the idea behind that is that you know you just got in a you know just got in a shootout. There's a threat, and you want to keep your eyes out and about, not looking down. Now my philosophy on it is that if I'm in a real shooting, bang, 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 I just shot. I'm not putting my gun away until I feel everything is safe. I might stay in a, in a low retention this way. I might stay in sewer or a covered sewer, but I'm gonna be with my gun here, and only when I'm sure there's nothing happening, then I'm gonna do this. And I look at my gun for a split second. Split second, okay? So it's not a big deal at all. Now you're gonna tell me that, you know, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, coast is clear, and now I look down for a second, bang, and that's when they shoot me? I mean, that's, that's, that's extreme to me. If I'm here for a long time, and everything is cool, and there's no threat, and I go like this, and now I look down, like, this is how long it literally takes me. And you tell me that split second I look down, that's when I'm gonna get shot? Uh, it could happen, it could happen. So I showed you both theories. Now the reason why I want to look is because it drastically reduces the chance of an accident by looking at the holster. I'll be, I can see my finger, I can see everything. Now another issue with holstering is to make sure your, your shirt is clear. Sometimes people kind of tuck, they, their, their shirt is not really clear and when they, when they put the gun in, when they put the gun in, I'll duplicate it, the material of the shirt, let me get it here, goes through the trigger guard like that. Okay, you see how the shirt's in there? So when I put, push the gun through, listen. Well, I wasn't able to replicate it, but sometimes you hear the click happen. Okay, so the material gets caught in the trigger guard, and when you push it down, it makes the gun go off. So make sure that it's clear when you reholster. Okay, and, uh, and that's it, guys. Okay, uh, just, to, to, just to walk it through one more time. Access, grip, pull, rotate, scrape and join. Extend, scan, assess, okay, reholster. And that's uh, a method of drawing your pistol from concealment. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can find me at Marcos Avalon, or you can also find me at Miami Shooters Club on Instagram and Facebook. Also, feel free to text or call me at 305. 551-0100. You can also email me at marcosavalon at marcosavalon.com. Check out my website at www.miamishootersclub.com. We offer lots of, of basic and advanced courses. We also offer NRA instructor courses so you can teach your own concealed carry permit classes in Florida. Also, we offer a free gun class for beginning shooters that if, you never, if, you, if you've never touched a gun before or you do have some experience shooting but you consider yourself a novice, we have a free private class we do for, for people at our facility. Just reach out to me or call us right now at 305-551-0100. Thanks a lot. Please leave me some comments and feedback and let me know what you think of this video. And join my email list as well so you can get more free videos. Uh, also, you can follow me on YouTube as well. Thank you.